All right, everybody. Well, as you can see, it is a gloomy day. It was a bad day yesterday. It rained most of the day. But uh, today we're going to try to do a few things. We're going to walk around and talk about uh, different things that inspire us to homestead or garden or farm or any, anything that really inspires you to do what it is that you do this is of course what we do this is what we enjoy right now i'm out here as you can see i got a big pile of uh feed sacks and a burn pile so we're gonna be uh putting all these bags up in this burn pile today and uh we're gonna set it on fire and burn this little bit of stuff it won't take long all that'll be gone and then we're gonna walk around and check uh check behind the boys they the boys get up every morning and uh before school and they make around and feed animals but it doesn't hurt to check behind them they are 16 and 14 one's worried about all his buddies and chasing girls one's worried about football and chasing girls so you know that's that's you just kind of have to check behind them every now and then just make sure they are on top of their game and uh anyway we're gonna get this pile going first bags are a little moist they ain't really wanting to uh catch on fire too well of course it did rain yesterday so everything everything outside's a little moist so hopefully we'll get it going if not well they can wait till next time I got one side going pretty good. Figured these old paper bags would catch on fire pretty easy. But it is kind of moist in the air. So I guess they're a little a little moist. Yeah, that side's getting going pretty good over here. So we're just gonna let this burn down real quick hopefully looks like it's starting to get going pretty good right up inside there and once this burns down a little bit we'll uh we'll go check on all the animals and feed and waters and all that good stuff and see how all that looks well that one bag is going pretty decent they may get the rest of it going pretty good here directly this old this is piled up on an old stump inside there that we uh tree fell last year during hurricane laura it fell right across there you can see when we walk up there in a little bit i'll show you the end of the carport's a little 
tin's kind of all jacked up and that's where it that's where it fell last year and uh just the very end of that tree caught the edge of that carport and smashed it down but while this is starting to burn we'll just talk a little bit about different things that we have going on of course everybody knows we have the goats and the chickens and the rabbits and we uh we're always thinking about expanding uh you know like last year we had the big garden area right here and the raised bed right over there which uh we're going to be putting in more of the raised beds and um getting getting it to where it's easier on us to maintain it's a lot to weed a big garden we don't use a lot of uh weed killers and things like that we uh we like to kind of just let it go as natural as possible pretty much so we uh raised beds seem to put off a lot less fire's going pretty good now they seem to uh to require a lot less maintenance and with us both working full-time jobs um <clears throat> ashley's gone a lot you know five days a week she's gone i work offshore 14 and 14 so i'm gone two weeks at a time and uh it, it's a lot when i'm gone i mean i take care of pretty much everything when i'm home uh as far as outside as far as the the homesteading side of it goes i take care of a lot of it because Ashley's only home on the weekends and we try to hang out and do whatever. And uh, of course, Zach's in football. So that's Friday nights lead up with that with varsity games. And then Monday nights are junior varsity games. And he's a freshman, which he don't really play in varsity. But um, as the sport goes, as a junior varsity player, you should be there supporting your varsity team. So. We, tra we travel for all those. Like the last game we went to this past Friday night was in Spring Hill. And for us, that's a three hour drive away from here. So uh, we didn't even get home until Saturday morning. By the time the game was over, drove home. They got the locker room cleaned up and we picked Zach up and got back home. It was two o'clock in the morning before we got back home. So we slept in Saturday and then we had a little get together for uh some friends of ours that are becoming grandparents and we just had a day we had a little cookout over there and of course i didn't film none or nothing like none of that it was i was just for them and um but we did go over there and hang out with them and and eat and i'm sure you can hear that male quail in the background he's going crazy because he's separated from his females right now but we'll talk about that when we get over there but uh yeah, so we uh, we trying to do everything we can around here. I'm gonna let that fire be for a little bit and walk out here. This is that area I did in that video where we cleaned it all up. As you can see, the grass is already taken back over it really good. We uh, we still got a few watermelons growing in here. Uh, it's we got our first good cool snap over this past weekend and uh it has pretty much put an end to the watermelon growing cantaloupe growing that's really the only thing we had left going i think this watermelon right here is ready yeah let's see on the watermelon take a little time to give a little advice here is the watermelon here's its stem and you see right well let me get that flyer out of the way you see right here, they got this little tassel that grows opposite of it. You see how this one's all dried out? That tells you that this pumpkin, this pumpkin, good Lord, listen to me. This watermelon is ready to be picked. Let me get my K knife out. So, that watermelon's ready to go. Now we'll go back over here. I'll walk over here and look at one of these, one of these other ones and show you what I was talking about on the it being dead now you see on this one you see on this side it's all nice and pretty and green growing opposite it so that means that watermelon's still growing same thing with this one this one's got a little 
tassel on the back side of it right over there still green of course that's a small pumpkin so i knew it wasn't ready yet and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit now this little watermelon i don't know that it's going to grow all the way uh, we're going to let it be and see but yeah we uh we got another one right here this little tassel is still green we're going to let that one go and uh this plant is it's got some blooms on it but i guess we'll let it go a little bit longer i was gonna go ahead and tear all this out but i guess i won't i guess i'll let it be so uh a big we uh when i was doing that video talking about cleaning all this area up right here there was a big stump right here that i said i couldn't get out well i'm fortunate enough to have an awesome neighbor that lives right over there mr mike and uh he uh he come over here he's got a little little bobcat excavator so he came over here for me and dug this up and it is now sitting right there i gotta get the tractor and push it down yonder don't y'all look at this right here now we are literally 70 yards from the house or so and that's deer tracks all up in this dirt right here now dirt, dirt, lord, deer, by nature, they really like fresh dirt. I don't know why. You see more right here. Another track right there. And that's, that's a pretty big one. I mean, that's beside my hand. So that's a pretty good one moseying through here, which you hear the dogs all night long barking and hooping and hollering and making all kind of racket. And I know that's what they after because them deer come in here right here i mean right by the house so they uh they come out here barking at them deer all night long rabbits and anyway back to the story at hand about inspiration you don't necessarily have to have inspiration to um to want a homestead you know i mean you can have other things that drive you as far as uh, fresh produce you know like if you if that's one of the things that you're interested in is fresh produce well then you grow a garden and uh if you like knowing what's in your food if you like knowing what's been sprayed on your food or put as far as fertilizers or anything like that um that's that's something that that we like knowing ourselves um that's the reason why we grow a garden every year is not just not just because we like gardening we do like gardening but that's not our only drive that makes us do that we uh we like knowing what's in our food we like knowing where our food come from you know uh, that's why we grow chickens um that's why we um we like having layer chickens um they uh have destroyed their feeder apparently and there's a chicken out where did you get out from well we got a chicken out See if I can't catch this dude up. Come here, come this way. Come this way. Man, them chickens is fast. I was hoping she'd kind of go back to the area where she came out of. I don't know where. I don't know where she would have. Right now, that. Oh, right there, I see. Lord, she spurred me a little bit. Um. Anyway, I ain't gonna worry about the chickens out. I'll catch her this afternoon when the boys get home. So. Back up. 
anyway, um, like I was saying before I found out we had a chicken out, we uh, we like having chickens. I don't think they got fed this morning, and that's why you check behind your kids. Cause just like this, I can tell by the way they acting, they ain't been fed today. So they got water, but they ain't been fed. So let me go get them some feed up here, and then. Uh, but anyway, we we like knowing that our eggs are pretty much natural. You know, we like knowing that our eggs, our hens that lay our eggs, don't have anything crazy put in them. Ah, spider web. Rabbits didn't get fed this morning. Quail are doing what quail do. That's the only one that's really mature enough. Now, like I was saying, uh, same thing. We like knowing we like quail. We like to eat quail. But uh, that air conditioner's running right now. It's gonna be a little loud. But we like knowing we like knowing what's where our quail come from. We like knowing what our quail's eating every day, um, which is pretty much rolled oats and and protein supplement now here's the male and you hear him going all crazy now he got plenty of food and water he's going crazy because we took him out of the females because well i'm gonna have to catch one of them on the back of their heads they're missing now they're missing feathers, but that's not the reason why we took the male out. Because, I mean, that's what males do. They grab them by the back of the head as part of the reproductive process. And these didn't get fed or watered. There again, that's why you check behind your teenagers. Because big chickens didn't get fed, rabbits didn't get fed, little chickens didn't get fed. Which means the ones that's out there, well, I'm gonna go get the feed first. Um, still sprinkling a little bit. And we'll walk out to the goat pen here in a little bit. Let's go up here and get some feed for these chickens. And uh, anyway, um, I swear we can't keep up with scoops in this house or nothing. But time to, time to go to the feed store. Yeah. Three big scoops of that. Goats got fed this morning. <sighs> Baby chick food. Yeah, we. We got this much feed around here. It's unreal. I got four scoops today. All right. So we uh, I'll catch a rabbit in a little bit. We um, same thing with our rabbits. We like uh, we like rabbit meat. We um and that's all we have is um meat rabbits they're new zealand california crosses and uh we uh there again we like back in Alright. We like, hey, don't jump up on me.
And that's another reason why you know that they wasn't fed early this morning. I had to come back and do their water. They got a little bit, but this uh But anyway, back to the story at hand. I know I keep getting distracted every time I go to feed an animal. We uh Yeah. We that's where we draw our inspiration from. It's not necessarily inspiration. That's where we draw our drive from. Is uh, knowing where our... Get back in there. Knowing... I gotta, I gotta latch this door back up because... They like to try to get out. We, uh, all right now. Really? All right, y'all gonna get it on the ground then. But anyway, we, uh, we take very good care of our animals because, I mean, they take care of us in the long run. Layer chickens give us eggs, eventually will give us meat. We, uh, we don't, we don't raise them specifically for their meat, of course. We, we raise, we raise layers because they're layers. Um, That is the sole purpose of us having layer chickens. Come on. <laughs> Left that gate open, hoping I could draw that other one back in. Maybe she'll get the point. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Got her. And I'll have to mend that little section right over there that she got out of, apparently. I'm assuming. Now, we have a I ain't worried about this shit on the ground, that chicken's all eat it. We got a bleeding chicken. Yeah. They've been plucking at each other's tail feathers. Um, you can see that one right there. It's big one, biggest one we got, big rooster. Um, we have a wide variety of chickens just because we like a wide variety of eggs. Some of them lay brown eggs, some of them lay green eggs, some of them lay blue eggs. Um, white eggs, of course. Um, It's a variety of chickens here on the scales on the dead. Um, there again, simply because we like eggs. We like not having to buy eggs. Now, yeah, eggs are cheap. You know, you pay, well, I don't know. I guess $2 a dozen or so, something like that in the store and uh oh you hush and of course we feed our chickens more than two dollars in feed a day well yeah yeah we feed them more than two dollars in feed a day we probably feed them no no chickens probably get well, a hundred pounds of feed lasts us a week. Um, so, hundred pounds costs like twenty dollars. So, I guess really it is less than two dollars a day. Now you're not going to eat a dozen eggs a day, but then comes the extra benefit of having a lot of chickens is 
you sell the eggs for two dollars a dozen and it offsets the cost of your feed so we're gonna walk out here by these goats i know zach fed the goats this morning because i've seen the goat feed bucket was lower so we uh I said I was going to put it in a video, but I didn't. But we do have this pen is now sectioned off. We got that big Nubian and the two males over here on this side. And we got all the females on this side. And this female, as you can tell, is wide. That female right there that we call cow goat is wide. She, uh, yeah both of them are bred um now the goat in the back back there uh big mama that we call her anyway she's been rebred to big billy again we're gonna give them one more shot we don't hey put you on my pants we don't know whether uh whether it's her that's only throwing one baby or if it's him that's only throwing one baby now we are hoping she's kind of old so um I, I think it's probably just come to the end of her cycle we we got her bred again this time but i think this is going to be the last time that we breed her um especially if she only throws off one again there's no point in, in putting her through the misery as old as she is of of carrying just one baby and that's it and one baby at a time is really not gonna grow our herd the way that we want you know we're hoping for twins or triplets or quads would be awesome but um that way we can actually make some money back off of these goats um we plan on selling our babies and I'm not real sure a cow goat may not be in labor. She by God might be. Let me go in here and check on her. This is gonna turn into a long video. Um I, I wasn't really planning on it being a long video. Hang on, I'll have to put y'all down here a little bit for a second. Yeah. Hey there, Ruth. There's little Ruth. Now, you can tell she's considerably skinnier than she was in some of our last videos. She got some, uh, some worm issues. Um, I'm gonna see if I can't sneak up on cow goat here because she still ain't really human friendly. Hey, baby. Hey. I really just want to check you. Hey, stop it. Quit. I really want to, she's, yeah, she's leaking a little bit. You're leaking a little bit. Oh, Lord. Well, they are, uh, yeah, your tendons are almost gone. I know you ain't long. Now, cow goat, unfortunately, will not allow me to get close enough to her to feel her tendons um she was pretty wild and out when we got her i'm hoping when she gets closer to going into labor her hoo-ha is swole up pretty good and she's leaking a little bit of mucus from it so both of them may be getting pretty close to uh to giving birth i hope they don't give birth at the same time supposedly the people we got them from said that it was a month difference in them being bred now well i'm gonna say it this way hang on i'm gonna say it this way of course a goat only goes into heat certain times um but they uh they had the they had the gray goat in 
first with the buck and then for a month and then they took gray goat out and put the cow goat in there and was in there for a month and then we went and picked them up now she said it was kind of hard to understand the woman we got them from um it was a latina woman that we that we got the the goats from and she don't speak real good english so we're rednecks we don't speak good spanish i could pick up on a few words i speak a little bit of spanish i took it to school i could pick up on a little bit of some stuff that she would say but when she would try to speak in english it was it was easier almost to understand her in spanish than it was in english so uh yeah so that was that oh we'll walk out here by the uh blueberry bushes that grew a ton this year um we got a couple of quarts of blueberries off just these four little bushes and they have they've grown nice they they grew a lot of a lot of extra limbs so see like all this is new growth for this year and um that's gonna be good but we uh so anyway we uh the thing about it is with them goats is okay well it they was in there for a month separate but if the gray goat was didn't go into heat until right at the end of the month and then they put cow goat in there and she was in heat right then that means they got bred maybe within a week of each other um maybe within a day of each other so we we are grasping at straws when it comes to this um goat breeding thing well not not for ours we know when 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 we bred big mama because we did it so we know that 145 days we should start being ready I think it's 145 days. I'll have to look back. Um, anyway, um, yeah, back to the inspiration of being a homesteader or a farmer or a rancher, I guess you could call it if you're just doing animals. Um, we, we draw our drive from, um, from knowing what we're putting in our body um that's just that's just us that's just how we like to do it um of course during the winter time i mean we can we preserve we freeze we uh dehydrate you know we we do all kind of stuff to preserve our garden fruits through the winter but that only carries you so far um I, our garden didn't put out enough this year um to really uh really put up a lot we uh we put up very minimal this year because we, we got minimal i mean that's just how it is so this year during the winter we will be buying you know fake tomatoes as i call them fake cucumbers things like that from from the grocery store because well we didn't grow enough so uh that's something that we're gonna have to hopefully do better with next year um i think a lot of it falls on the fact that we focused on animals a lot this summer um and didn't really focus on gardening so much so i'm pretty sure that was a contributing factor to us not doing so great but we're gonna try to we're gonna try to do better this coming up year um we uh now as far as the animals as far as for the inspiration or drive to work the animals that's i guess you could say that's more of a a business deal now ashley loves her goats i love my chickens that's i'm the chicken man uh of the family uh 
offshore they do call me chicken king i do have chicken king on some of my work shirts um but ashley loves her goats um now when goats get to the end of their life cycle it's they go into freezer camp that's that's just what they're that's what they're for inevitably they are for food um they will be bred uh babies will be sold things like that throughout their lifetime um they're here to help us make some money also um you know that's that's just a, a what's the bird i'm looking for that's another uh revenue stream that that we are trying to get set up um around here you know it, it takes a lot of feed um to feed animals feed ain't cheap um now they do have a big paddock to walk around in and eat grass and whatnot but that only provides them so much um they they have to have they have to have more than just that little bit of stuff we have been experimenting with letting them out and graze around but the only issue with that is our blueberry bushes and our orchard is not fenced off so they could very well get in there and mow our blueberry bushes down so that's 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 a that's another thing that you have to stay uh with a drive to want to do it with a with a purpose because um you you have to constantly think ahead you know yeah i could just turn the goats loose and just let them be out all day long they know where to go when it's time to go in at night but what what are they going to be doing while they're out you know what bushes are they going to be eating on things like that so you, you can't just turn them loose and say oh well they're just they're going to eat what they eat because um they, they could get into things that you don't want them to eat they could um <clears throat> They could destroy anything, and I mean anything, that you were trying to, to build or push further or, or something like that. Now, we, uh, I, I do plan on fencing the orchard off eventually or going four feet by four feet squared around each one. Um, and and blocking each tree off and maybe that that would work um i haven't really made my mind up as far as as what i want to do because we did have some issues like i showed earlier in the video with how close the deer come to the house now we'll walk out here to the orchard area and i'll show you what i'm talking about we had some problems because it is out by where the woods used to be know where it's misting and it's nasty so the pile ended up burning down pretty good metal frame and then i'll put that in scrap pile now um uh, out here as you can see this this tree i need to top it off um it's doing really well it's growing really good um this tree is so so uh some of the it's starting to regrow, but I need to top it also. But then you take this little tree right here. Now you'll see all around it is rabbit poop. Now, there's the top of it. It had leaves all out through this thing. And you see, it's just dry, it's rotten, it's no good. Um, because the rabbits eat the leaves off of it, the deer eat the top off of it. Because they come up right through here. Now, some of the bigger trees uh, well, fared fine. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to burp on camera. Um, I do need to do a little bit of trimming. There's a couple of, like this right here. There's a couple of little dead limbs on there. Um, and you really need to cut those off. That way the, the tree is not wasting energy on trying to make that work. Now, we got one apple off that tree this year. And you'll see some of them starting to, some of them starting to turn. It's just getting that time of the year. Um, they're not dead. It's not dead by far. Um, it's just getting to be that time of the year. But one of the issues we had was deer coming through here and munching on the leaves, eating them up, 
killing them. This is a pecan tree. And I don't know why they targeted specific trees like this one. Son, they raped everything off this tree. It's still alive. It's not dead. It's not dry. So we'll see what it does next spring. Same thing with this one. This is two, this, these are two peach trees. And uh, they're still, the limbs are still rubbery, so they're not dead. Um, but that's that's one of the deals with it is is deer come up here and, and munch leaves off of it and of course that's how trees survive is through photosynthesis I think it's called this tree is growing kind of crooked I need to straighten that up a little bit but yeah so see like this one they snuck in here on this one and just tore it down now it does have a green leaf on it so that means that it's still alive and that is apple tree but we had another tree right up here that's gone these are mayhaw trees um they got little little tiny leaves so of course they're they're starting to turn already because we've had a couple of mornings where it's been in the 50s that's been rather nice another peach tree up there but uh another mayhaw tree but that's that's one of the issues that you face you know with with that is is do i fence off this whole area and put a gate where i can drive in here and mow or do i just fence off each tree and fill it with mulch inside that little cubicle area and not have to worry about it it's things like that have to be taken into account um when you decide to to go down this particular this particular path in life um this is something that me and my wife have always been passionate about is not necessarily being self-sustained we'll say as being um community sustained i guess we'll call it um we do have a big group of people that we talk to that that we can reach out to for help that we can you know call and ask questions to and we we like being we like being people that can be asked questions also now we're not the smartest people on the face of the earth but nothing we do as homesteaders or gardeners or farmers really none of it's proprietary it's all the you're not doing anything special per se um a lot of the things that we may think of to try have probably been tried before more than likely um so we don't mind sharing information we don't mind answering questions we don't mind telling people how we do what we do um if you have any questions feel free to ask leave it in the comments send us an email um if you know us personally and have our phone number call us shoot us a text i got a call this morning from a guy that has a bunch of chickens and he's just he's just started down this road of, of homesteading um so he had his first hen went broody here several weeks ago um on some eggs so they let them be well uh they've hatched out she's hatched out a couple and the the little laying box that they're in is a bucket that's up off the ground and the babies can't get in and out to be able to eat so he called me and asked my advice and i give my advice on a couple of different ways he can handle it but we're getting ready to go back to work and he don't really have somebody that can take care of the stuff that he needs to so the the, the babies need to be able to get back and forth to feed and water while the mom is still broody on the other eggs um so like I said, he called. I give my advice on, on a couple of different solutions that he could do. I don't mind doing that. I, I don't 
I don't mind sharing information, and I, and I hope that I can help somebody. That is, that is the point of this YouTube channel, um, as part of this Facebook page, is to try to put information out there to either inspire somebody to be able to do it, because if my redneck tail can do it, then you can do it. I promise you. It's, it's a learning curve. There's a lot of learning that goes on with homesteading and farming and whatnot um when it comes to raising animals and figuring out the different things that need to be done at different times just like with the little goat that i said she had some worm issues i should have done wormed her I, I knew this but i didn't and she got some worms which she's been wormed now everything will be fine um but it, it's things like that 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 people don't think about you know people jump into this lifestyle thinking oh well you just throw some chickens in a pen they'll be fine you throw some goats in a pen they'll be fine well it's, it's not it's not just that it's not super hard but there are particular things that need to be done chickens need calcium chickens need greenery chickens they don't need just to be pinned up in a pen with just feed now ours are pinned up for the time being because we're still training puppies but that's going to change um that's all part of training puppies also is letting the chickens out and teaching them that they cannot mess with the chickens um so the, the chickens do get let out whenever we're trying to teach the dogs um you know what they need to be doing and 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 all that good stuff so uh you know it's we the drive that drives us is to inspire other people to be able to do the same thing we like knowing what's in our food. We like knowing what's been put on our food. And we like knowing the fact that we can inspire somebody to do the same thing. Especially people on a personal level. People that know us personally know that we're, I mean, we're not the smartest people in the world by far. We have attended the school of hard knocks when it comes to farming a lot. Um, we started when we was in town and and we have carried the knowledge that we gained while we was in town and and moved it out here to this 33 acre piece of land that we are slowly developing and and that that's a whole nother learning curve is raw land when you get raw land and decide to to try to transform it it's there's a lot of work in it there's a lot of little things that you don't realize need to be done and man it can it can get your mind off of being inspired we went and looked at another piece of property that was further advanced than ours but um instead of buying that property we used that as an inspiration you know seeing what this woman had set up give us the drive to get more stuff set up here to get it set up different to do things different to so i mean it you don't necessarily have to buy something that is set up but go look at it that can give you inspiration to say hey that's a good idea right there i want to try that um and, and that's the point of our videos like i said a little bit ago you know is to maybe somebody will see something that we're doing and say hey man i can i can do that we get inspired every day by other people on youtube by other people on facebook doing the same thing you know we we'll, we'll go on there and watch their videos and be like man i can do that i can build that and we get out here and we build it you know like the, the cattle panel greenhouse which is one of our best performing videos um now we are going to redo it. it it did go through some bad weather and the, the plastic got torn off of it but uh we're going to go a different route with it but we was inspired by by another channel that built one and i seen it and i said well lord that was pretty easy so i got out here in a couple of days and throwed it together and it was super simple and, and it's easy it's easy to build it's easy to get inspired so that, that's the whole point in this video and i know i rambled a lot and it's all kind of different things in this video but i hope to inspire people 
to be able to not rely on going to the grocery store. Because Lord help, what if we can't go to the grocery store one day? What if grocery stores are non-existent? You know, what? where, where are you going to be then? So, hopefully, you can learn something from some of these videos that we make. And, and be able to be a little bit more self-sufficient and not rely on going to a grocery store and or going to a meat market or, or going somewhere to, to get your food. You know, I hope to inspire somebody to say that, hey, if that crazy redneck can do that, then maybe I can too. So I hope I didn't ramble too much. I hope this gives you some kind of information i hope this gives you some inspiration to do something whether it be growing uh i forget what they call green stalk yeah if you live in a small apartment you get you a green stalk not necessarily a green stalk brand but that style grower you can grow tomatoes in that you can grow a few things in that you know to where you don't have to go buy that at the store get you two or three of them you can grow you several things so um, you know, build, build, if you got a little piece of land, build you a couple of raised beds, um, and grow you some produce in there. If you've got enough land where you can fence in a little area and put you some chickens in there or get you a goat or, or something, you know, I mean, anything that can get you more self-sufficient will benefit you in the long run. Plus... It's a lot of hard work, but at the end of the day, when you look back and you see what you've done for that day, or you've done for that week, or you've done for that hitch while you was home, you can say, man, this, this is very satisfying. The end of a long work day, or work week, or work hitch, on your farm, on your homestead, in, in, your, in your small yard, in your apartment garden, whatever it may be, you can look back at the end of that and say, I've done something to better myself. And I really, really hope that people do stuff to better themselves. So I've rambled enough. This video is like 55 minutes long. I'm sorry for it being so long. Um, but hopefully you can uh, get some inspiration from this video and from all our other videos that we have out there or any other homesteader or whatever on YouTube or Facebook that you may follow. I hope that the homestead community can inspire you to be better for yourself when it comes to your food. So we appreciate all the support. Y'all keep it coming. Keep the shares going. As always, if you're new to the channel or not new to the channel, if you've just come across our channel go ahead and subscribe hit the notification bell if you just come across us on facebook uh hit that follow button you know like these videos that helps us out the more y'all like the videos the more youtube algorithm puts it out there for other people to see and that is the point of this channel is to get it out there for as many people that can see it so we hope y'all learned something and we appreciate y'all support and we will see y'all on the next one